officialwatches.co.uk Proud sponsors of Cage Fighter. Hello, Grant, my old <laughs> man. I said to you, I want an entrepreneur who emails me every week, texts me saying, Dave, why am I not on that show? Because I'm a good looking cage fighter. Well, he was, because yeah. he was in Cage Rage VIP. Yeah. Who have you got me? Well, this guy fought on the biggest show Cage Rage ever did, Cage Rage 28, and he fought the biggest guy Cage Rage ever had on their fight <laughs> card. It is Steve Hotwood. Steve, you mean Hoppy? Everybody knows hop, him hop, as the hop, hop, the hop master. Oh, the hop, oh, the hop master. <laughs> the hop master. Which in a part of where you come from? I mean, the beauty of it is, Steve, you have back, before you as a fighter, you have helped fighters. And that's what I love about some of you guys with a bit of dollar around you. You helped Neil Grove. You helped Ben Smith. You sponsored them. You got them to where they need to be. I mean, what's it like for you just looking at guys going, you know what, I want to help you. What made you do that? Well, firstly, um, I've had a very humble sort of background uh, coming into sort of fighting. But it started off with really Neil helping me. He changed me. I had a, like, a little epiphany in life, really, where he changed my whole philosophy of where I was going, what I was doing. And then from that, then I sort of could sit back and go, I can help them. I've got to do something to help. And then with other kids around this sort of thing, you know, give people hope. Because I was, uh, you know, I'd, uh, <clears throat> I went from 120 kilos. We had a first child. I was, went uptown. It was all stressful and this sort of thing. I was really, really unfit. And I could see myself getting nearly as fat as Grant. So I thought <laughs> I'd have to do something about it. So uh, I um, just through a friend of a friend got me put in touch with Neil Grove. And that's it, we started training. Started and, uh, training. We were just, like, just me and him just to get my weight down and get me some under control. But of course, during the, during the, uh, the, the training, just to sort of stop yourself because you're tired, you end up doing a bit of that sort of all the time. Of course, I kept telling him all the stories I was banging these people out and banging them. But, and he thought I was like telling all sort of uh, you know, lies. Yeah. But you have been a Marine, is it a Marine? Or? No, I was a paratrooper. Paratrooper, I knew it was something along them lines. Yeah, yeah. Don't, like, Don't go there, you tried to put me on the show with a Marine before, <laughs> didn't you? But the beauty of it is, you know, you got your hand in your pocket and you pulled some of them guys because it's so hard for MMA fighters to make a good living and you help yeah. these guys get to the next level. So now we're going to take a look at a guy he helped. This is Neil the Goliath Grove versus James McSweeney. There's the Superman punch. Gavin Mulholland predicted that from James. Followed by a leg kick. Again looking to find a leg kick, a front kick. Grove, the big roundhouse himself. McSweeney trades nicely off of his hands and then a kick. Has to be very aware of Neil Grove though. Big looping shots. Yes, Grove moved out of the way of that one nicely. Could we see a James McSweeney submission victory possibly? This would be a real turn up, he did say when he was talking to Jason Barrett earlier. It doesn't matter where it goes, but it looks like suddenly Neil Grove is out. And some, what, a, what a change around in this fight, Rob. Back and forward. Turn of events, see Neil Grove on top again. Landing huge hammer fist. McSweeney doing the right thing, just pushing him, pushing Grove away, keeping his base. Yes, and he kicked to the face from on the floor there. McSweeney shoots. Grove looking very, very tired as he sprawls out on top of McSweeney there. Both these fighters showing the, the tail of the first round as McSweeney rolls into... This is dangerous times for McSweeney as Grove bangs in those big left hands. Referee Grant Woman looking on closely. We tell him McSweeney to work. If he's not happy, he will stop the fight. James McSweeney has to keep busy or Neil Grove will take this victory. Grant Big left hand, it's, it's over. In again. Neil, Neil Grove, Grove went for broke and he succeeded. He went for it and he got it. Great, great work by Neil Grove. Here you can see why he went for it all now. Both men were tired, as you know. And Grove really went for it at the end there. He weren't ready for Grove, was he? Neil Grove. It was all about the time, and it was Neil's time at that moment there. He was really hungry, really, really hungry. Yeah. I know James was, and James, as I said, he's got a, he had a great, great record in sort of K1, and 
you know, he was not a man that you would want to stand toe to toe to in a pub if something went wrong with altercation, <laughs> bingo, you're in a lot of trouble sort of thing. But Neil, he had, he had, the, he had a few more, I think, tools in his box at that, yeah. at that point. We were training at various different, different gyms and James had, um, I, I think I first saw him fight, um, I think it was Cage Rage 27, I think he, he, he came on that, was he? 20, 21. 21, 21 maybe, 21, yeah. mate, yeah. And uh, right. he, Mustafa come straight in, bang, down, ground and pound, out you go sort of thing. So, yeah. um, and, he, and he went off to, to the US and uh, trained with Team Jackson and he came back and he looked, he looked focused and a lot of thought, it was like... Well, it went to the second round, I didn't think it got this, to the second This was round, it, yeah. like, yeah, he was going to be... And, it, and I thought <clears> it was a bit of a question about his cardio and because Neil was that much bigger than James in, in terms of weight. Mm. But of course, you know, Neil... You know, for a big man to carry himself around and deliver his cardio for that amount of time. Well, yeah. you must have felt some punch from Neil, because I know I have in, in, uh, when he was doing uh, <laughs> Fighting Hurts, fighting hurts yeah. and the guy, even when he mucks around, he just goes, Oi, Grant, Oi, Dave, you get knocked from back. You know, well, he, call, he calls me my brother from another mother, and we are real still you know, very good close pals, we talk to him all the time. But of course, when we were training for uh, Buzz Berry's fight, um, like James and uh, various other guys, when we were sparring, He's sparring like ninety five percent with me. Yeah, yeah. I'm kind of like, what are you doing? I'm your mate. He's because he's a karate sort of background. Yeah. These round ass spinning back kicks and whatever. And sort of like, oh. and people watch heavyweights, people that big, and they say, oh, they're only arm punching. Well, it's but funny you should say that because I'm going to stop you two now. Let's look at another two heavyweights and see how arm punch it really helps out. This is from UC MMA twenty eight. Scott Sayard versus from Liverpool, Paul Taylor. My name's Scott Sayward, I'm 19 years old, I'm an independent fighter fighting out of Gordon's Gym. My name's Paul Taylor, 31 years old, I train under the Sapphire Gym in Liverpool. I've been training hard for this fight, I want it bad, I've been training hard, I've been doing a lot of boxing, a lot of kickboxing, a lot of wrestling. Yeah, training hard for this, I've got new coaches, new sparring partners, uh, new gym, so different uh, regime, better, I feel a lot better for this fight than I've ever been. I have no message for you Paul Taylor, I'm going to let my hands do the caulking in the cage. Scott, you've had your own way with all your opponents so far. This one isn't going to be so easy for you. So here we go. Heavyweight action. A huge big leg kick. Scott moving quickly with those hands. Taylor catches him as he moves out. Nice work by Taylor. In Taylor and out, in and out. Beautiful job dipping under. Moves well. The aggression of Sayward, that was a nice one of the body. He is pouring these shots on to be, to be well served, to be careful where he is and try and maintain his Oh, oh there's a left hand. That was Taylor's caught him. Taylor's caught wow. him with a big leg. He's out. He's out. He's out. He's out. He's out. He's out. Wow. And here we see the replay. As you see, as he's coming in, he covers up and he's waiting for his opportunity. He rolls the aggression of Scott Sayward as he came forward. Taylor was just biding his time, though, looking to uncork that big left hand. And there oh, it was, beautiful short right left on the chin, very crisp. And from here, the punches came down the hammer fists, and you can see Scott's out. Beautiful win, really, really. There it is, that crisp left hand. It just shows you, heavyweights can ka-ching! Oh, yeah. And when did that? But when you're 130 kilos or 120 kilos, the slightest hit and the party's over. It doesn't matter how big you are, it's the actual how you throw and connect a punch. Yeah. Now you can be, you know, like, you know, my, my missus for example, <laughs> if I wasn't looking properly, she knew how to throw a right hand properly, I'd be on the arm. But as of yet, I've never actually been knocked out ever, ever in my life sort of thing. So it's a big statement to make, yeah. But now I've got to sort of the echelonces of old rage. I think we, I've We're talked him round. No, I've talked him round. I want to do a charity fight on a white collar because there's sort of guy, the 90 second round, Ian Freeman's done it, Andy Gear. <clears> it's for charity, for cancer, for something. We get guys like you who they ain't going to train full time anymore, but it's nice to get out one last time to get the upward back in action. Anyway, we're going to talk him into it after <laughs> the break. <laughs> Welcome back to Cage Fight, the show. Let's all go and dancing and this and that. And we're part, yeah? I mean, we're sitting here, we're having a good time. Living the dream. Living the dream. And uh, I want to get invited to Monaco because that's where, that's where it's all happening. Yeah, Firstly, I'm Dave, I'm one. the European indoor and outdoor world dancing champion. You've got to do a lot better than that to get oh. over to Monaco. <laughs> so let's get that one for right first. The challenge is on. The challenge is on. He obviously ain't been to our after parties where I have it proper large, proper. <laughs> now, but you know, you're a good time. You live hard, you train hard, and you party hard. And, and that's what you've got to do. To, I, I think a lot of fighters, they go down that route of, 
they'll do six weeks, 12 weeks in a camp, but when that camp's over, they're yep. like, back right, champagne on, and, and we're going to have a party. Because you've got to do that to break up the, uh, your mentality, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, that's the difference between, you know, I had to, you know, my, my sort of background was obviously in a, you know, in a city environment, and I, it took so much out of me to train a four months pro to doing that. I was no going, drinking? I was going, no drinking, no, no, nothing at all, apart from <laughs> eating so much food, uh, it was brilliant, but because I was going down to the London Fight Factory and uh, they basically closed the gym for me. So every single day I'll go down there and all the guys there were just there for me because I was the only guy that was actually sort of really? fighting sort of pro. And I was training five five minute rounds with with, with each a new person Top five. for each right, round. Right, let me just ask you this question because this is brilliant. When I've oh, trained seven five minute round, it don't matter right? how many rounds you're training. When you get in there, that first round is like you've done ten rounds already. Yeah, it's it's a it's a nasty feeling. It, it really is. You can't because people go. I've <coughs> trained for it. You've right. never trained. You never realise that first right. fight. You've never trained. That's for. the hardest part. The hardest part is to train. It's like an exam. It's what you put into it. If you know what the answers are, you sit down the exam. You pass. It's done. So how hard do you train in that gym? That's how you just get reflected when you actually actually. Well, have it's fight. funny because CJ was saying uh, she said, "Oh, maybe I want to do a charity fight for cancer. Oh, I want to do this." And I went, "Okay." So I've took her on a pad. She and she's hitting hard. She's trained from a young age. And she said, "Do you think? Do you think when, when do you think?" I went, "Let me tell you. If you even think you've got no idea, you know, you got to be doing five miles a day. I've got to be hitting you in the head. You know, you got to be bleeding. You got." To, they go, oh, I didn't realise it was going to be like that. They don't realise, you know. Yes. Whatever you think, you think you're training. When you're in there, it's nothing you like train, it. You train, you do ten fives or whatever. You get to the actual event. You start your warm-up. <laughs> and you're gassed already. I was, I'll, I'll be honest with you. That's, that, at the time, I was so chilled out about it. Yeah. And on the, on the Saturday, we had the, uh, sorry, the Friday, we had the weigh-ins and the media and, and all that sort of thing. It would be quite sort of funny. But looking around, there were so many superstars that, uh, in, in the world of you know, mixed martial arts. That I kind of was just sort of soaking up, going, oh, how good is this? Like, you know, chatting with people, and they're like, hello, mate, how are you doing? And I was just super, super chilled out. And uh, when you get the, right, yeah, you, you've got half an hour, so you, you could be fighting sort of maximum, then quarter of an hour or whenever it is sort of thing. Suddenly, two minutes. <laughs> the, the, the two fights prior to that were like, bang, 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 done. And they went, right, you only 10. I was like, oh my God, right. So, it, like, totally Louis went, right, Louis a bell, right, I got a pack, bang, bang, roll on the floor. I was like, <laughs> I was gone. I was gone. Well, that's what happened. But I was still kind of like, Happy to go, and he all said, "Bro, what are you doing? Look at you, You're too relaxed, man. Get yourself going right now." I was like, looked at him in the eyes, and he's a big dude. I'm just under six foot, so I had to bounce to get up to him. And he's talking, he's going, he's building me up, and he's building me up, and then suddenly, I've got this uh, like Not good bad, bad temper. But that's that's really why I got myself into it because I wanted to either get Cheer beaten up yeah. in front of people to sort of go right, that's Cheer it, out. chill out a little bit, or to sort of go right. I've got it out and I've yeah. done it now, sort of thing. And as I went down the stairs, because he was in front of me, I was like the main show of the car, yeah. so to spell that on that part. He was in front of me, and I, do you know what? I actually looked, I saw him, and I thought, how dare you even dare you go out there? The cheek of it. <laughs> he wants to fight me. And I went, Rah! And Neil says, the worst thing you've ever done. I let out about 75% of all my you're adrenaline you're yeah. or whatever. And of course, yeah. I went bouncing down in like a lunatic and whew, about 10 seconds. I was well, like, we're going to watch that, right? We're going to we're gonna come and watch that because I remember you gassing out. But <laughs> yeah. you know what? It's the heart that carries you. But first up, a man who, again, was as funny as you, Sean Carter talking to CJ backstage. Sean Carter, congratulations on your win. Coming out of BKK as well. How is it feeling? The fight, training, tell us all about it. Oh, like, uh, the training's been going really well. I can't make any excuse about the training. I've started doing some strength and conditioning, powering through with Will Whalen, so shout out to that man. Knows his stuff. BKK as always. Jack Mason, Luke Barnett, Steve May, Robbo, the mad monk, the bear man, it goes on, you know what I mean? But, yeah, top fighters, pro, semi-pro, amateur, really good. Uh, I tried to win it by being sexy and it was bloody ugly to be honest but that's where it goes sometimes. I mean I definitely think you dominated the fight and you know you pulled out so much the Kimura just at the end I don't know how that you know didn't manage to pull through but. Oh mate I'm going to pay for that John Maguire comes down and spars, spars me with me the boys from Tsunami so uh, we'll have to put that down to uh, me being rubbish and he's going to let me have it for that at the weekend no doubt. <laughs> the coolies the animal look at that man. Yeah. Great stuff. How do you feel you could have improved on your fight, looking back? Um, to be honest, making the cut from 77, which like I was far too small, really. 
I, I managed to get through like the lower levels, semi-pro, like more domestic lower level shows, like 84 and 77, like on skill set. But some of the 77s you got on that, on your show, they're beasts, you know what I mean? And going from dance college to fight, it's... Uh, I, I was going to say, what is it, the difference like, you know, semi-pro to, to now and where you are at? You got guys that train full time or guys that have been training a lot longer and uh, basically they're, they're more designed for the when you got guys like John Maguire and everyone goes John Maguire's the smallest he's the he's the best lightweight fighting at welterweight what am I you know what I mean I've got to get to lightweight you know the weight cut did affect me a little bit I look like a skeleton yesterday but that's where it goes well, there's a man, Sean Carter, who was, I can't believe it, 120 kg, now fighting at 70 kilos. And hardly any stretch marks, you know, but he's a dancer, box splits. 50, yeah, I know. 50 it's 50 kilos. 50 kilos it's, gone. What's that, eight stone? It's absolutely ridiculous. What, what One if... of my three legs gone. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're 100, you know, you've been 100. Can you imagine, going, oh, get down to 70 kilos, I'll give you a fight. It's just, it, it's not feasible. It took him two years, he said, to get there, but... Well, I, I trained, like, stupid hours, like, all day long for four months nearly. And I went from 120 down to 94 for mine. Oh, and I yeah. couldn't have cut anymore. I mean, I, would, I, didn't, I, I didn't want to cut. No. But I, and I was eating kind of like 20,000 calories a day. Yeah, 20,000 calories? I was eating pizzas, pasta, everything in there. But I was yeah. training at the fight factory, then training with Neil. And to get down to 70 kilos. Look, people don't understand. <laughs> when you train, if you say to someone, dedicate yourself for two weeks, that's hard enough, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Dedicating yourself for... A lot of people do a 12-week training camp, yeah. don't they? Or, or a, <clears> as you did, you know, f uh, four months. It's just the, the discipline to do that is extraordinary. It's just get up from your cosy bed with your cosy missus and you've got your little baby over there and you've got to get in the car and drive 30 it's miles into London. You're going, oh, I'm going to go to London and there's a load of people trying to punch me in the face. They get beat up. They're going to try and break my arms and there's all these Brazilian BJJ guys that are just unbelievable down there. They're, 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 they're the same old thing. Train hard. Fight, fight easy. easy. And we're going to look at someone fighting easy. It is Steve Hoppy Hopwood versus Neil Turner. Turner fought smart, kept his gas, sprawls well on his opponent after a short scramble. I'm disappointed with Turner upright though. He, he, he allows the gap to close naturally. There was no attempt there to use his tools, which is that huge height and reach advantage. And with that taekwondo background, I was waiting for the kicks at that range, and they didn't come wrong. That's right, you'd expect him to use them more. You know, it would give him the advantage in the range right now, trying to turn his man, trying to turn Hotwood to his back. Gets an arm in, Hotwood needs to be careful. Turner attempted to go for a rear naked. Good work by Hotwood to escape, but now he's put himself in a mount position. But he's gotten out, very, very good work. But great work by Turner, too. He's got some good jujitsu positioning. He was able to transition right to the side. And now it's Turner just trying to get those hammer fists into the face of Hopwood. With 1.30 just under now left in this round. And it's, it's been interesting to say the least, Rob. Yeah, it it's been, I mean, it's been a majority Hopwood round, but now Turner's turned the tables. It's interesting to see how he tries to work fine, his jiu-jitsu positioning. Well, Turner's a little high here, but he's so long, I don't know if Hopwood's going to be able to roll him. He's trying to headlock and then turn and roll, but the, the length of Turner's body, when he just sprawls out a little bit, it'll make it very difficult to get him over the top. Yes. Goes by a standard trade, and it's Hopwood that drops for the takedown. And Chris, you mentioned before, and we've seen it again, there's a huge advantage when Turner goes for that sprawl, isn't there? Yeah, well, it's easy. He just basically drops forward. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And it will slide you underneath him. <laughs> Turner talking to the ref there, Rob, calling Leon's attention. What do you think that was to? I think he, he may have said that there was some holding of the glove underneath where obviously it's difficult to see. Fight, both fighters' hands and arms trapped underneath. Good the... turn by Hopwood. Now he's got himself a single and he can pull through if he drives and pulls. But he does have Turner against the cage, which might make it a little bit difficult. He'll have to push him against there and then pull it out. And again, Turner using that height advantage as he just extends one leg backwards to post himself against the back of the cage. Let's work, let's stand you up. 
No, no. Looking to the referee wait, wait, wait. again. Something's up, up with Turner. Up. They've both been stood up. No, don't ever stop fighting up. And I don't know up. what he's complaining about, but he, twice now Turner has spoken to Leon. Face me. Face me. Stop. And they're back upright once more. And a tired punch there from Turner. Out of range. I don't know what he's trying to do there. He's trying to set up that, that left. It's a bit ragged upright, guys. I've got to be honest. A little bit unconventional, but Hopper connects. Oh, and there was a good uppercut, followed by a left that stumbles turn. Big left hook sees the big man fall down. Hopper going for the kill now. In the choke position, his fans are absolutely on their feet. And it that like is it. And he's got it. An okay from that big left hand. After a series, I've got to be honest, of an awful exchange. Well, but he got the one big one that counted. He went unconventional and then threw a traditional uppercut followed by a left hook and cleaned Turner's clock. You can see he stumbled him to the ground. Turner still had his wits about him, but obviously stunned. Hopwood was able to secure the rear naked and finish the fight. And that left hook was flush on the chin, and that set everything else up, as you said. But it was, a, it was just the right timing for him because, Rob, they were both very tired. Well, that's why they call him... The Hop Master. Oh, I love it. The Hoppinator, Hop Master, Hoppy. It don't matter. It was going to be the hammer, but James on the on the show as well, so I couldn't steal his fun. It was the main show. I so. mean, but you, just what we said earlier on about gassing out, it don't matter how hard you train when you're out there. I'd say you that, don't know where it, it goes. It brought a new meaning to mixed martial arts. There were, there were things there you don't often see. Ch what? Choking someone out while he's on his knees. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you know, it was it was all uh, it was all out heart, you know, and I had so many people down there come and see me, and I trained so hard for it, and I. I just wanted to go from start to finish. It was no way I was ever going to give him, ever. Give it, yeah. Never, the crowd, ever. The, 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 the crowd, I mean, it was hoppy. Yeah. I mean, I had, uh, I think, about 350 tickets at our sold, personally. Mm -hmm. And then the, everyone else of the readings, it was like David versus sort of Goliath. Yeah. All on my side. <laughs> so, of course, when he's pounding me, it, the chant, oh, B, oh, B. Yeah. And it was like, <laughs> Well, it was like being at Arsenal, it was like, you know, trying to... The, Colos the Colosseum. Colosseum. Percy it, back of the neck it, sort of thing. It was thing, like you know, the Colosseum. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, some here. <laughs> and um, and it, just, it, it just drove me forward, really. And, uh, Brilliant. Yeah, I mean, I, um, right at the end of the first round, you'll see me I got up as quick as possible, although I wanted to lay there and go to sleep. <laughs> Um, but I wanted to make out I wasn't as bad as what I was. You know, it was just yeah, got to psychological, just, isn't it? Just takes it, gasses you, just drops it. You know, so, so. mate, don't you dare worry anymore. But it's been an absolute pleasure. Oh, but before we go, because he checks it out every day. You see, MMA.com. If you know, want to know where Hopwood's going to be next, because he might do a charity event. We try and right, talk him hit, into it. I'm not going to hit you, because right. you just hit him for a little bit. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Warrior, you're unbelievable. Cage fighter, the warrior.